If you've been following our channel, you'll know last summer when we were in Nebraska for the Nebraska State Fair that uh, we had, I would consider a catastrophic blowout of one of the cables on our slide. I say catastrophic because it literally exploded and just frayed to pieces on the one side and it also broke inside and was tangled up within the pulley system. I did do that job myself. I did not videotape it. It was a bear of a job. I didn't even want to bother with the video, but if you go back, you can actually watch that video and see what happened around that slide. So I learned my lesson. It's easier to replace these things before they break. So you want to inspect to make sure that they are not fraying at the ends. And you'll see the one cable we have is starting to fray. In fact, it was very early stages when we were in Nebraska and it's a little worse now when we haven't even used it that much. So we're gonna go ahead and get on into it. I have one more trip to Lowe's to pick up one more item. And then I'm gonna show you everything you're gonna need to do the job and then I'll take you step-by-step step on the repair. So here we go. So I've got all my tools and parts laid out for the job. I'm going to go over that really quick because you will need some specialty tools to make this work properly. Now, mind you, I did do this once before and it would have cost over $200 for the repair guy to come out to do the job. And yes, it was about $100 in tools that I spent. I'm still $100 ahead and now I have all the tools for the next time I do the job. So here we go. You need a special crimping tool and you need a big heavy duty crimping tool because you've got to be able to squeeze this little part and crimp it tight around the cable. You're going to need a pair of cutters, cable cutters. Well, now the job is completely done and I was digging through my tool bag to put stuff away. I'm going to rethink how I pack my tools. I discovered this as I finished because apparently I had this problem before but didn't realize it. These were the cutters I was using for the job. These are the ones I should have used. When I cut with these, I got an absolutely perfect clean cut. So just remember, don't use these, use these. I would highly recommend getting a ratchet box wrench. It makes the job much easier. If you don't want to buy a whole set, three eighths is what you're going to need for the cable. I got the cable kit. This is the cable kit. It's by a company BAL and it's model 22305 cable repair kit. And though it's recommended through the instructions, but not required, I know the problem I had before. You want to get some multi-purpose adhesive spray. I got the Super 77 3M. You're going to put that on the cable before you slide it through. The reason why is this cable system, the cable and this has to go through a series of pulleys. If it gets too bunched up because you use tape instead, it's going to get jammed up in the pulleys and that's going to be really difficult. The biggest problem I've seen in watching other people do this job is they either use tape and use too much tape and it gets stuck or they don't use any tape at all and it comes apart before it slides through. Once that cable goes through the wall, you're pretty much done. If you have to feed it through manually without the old cable, it is far more difficult. Trust me, I had to do that before. So let's go ahead and get things prepped and ready to go. The first step is you need to bring the slide halfway in between so you can get to the cables on both sides. The thing about a cable slide system is there's actually eight cables. There's four cables that will drag your slide in and four other cables that pulls your slide out. So they both pull but either direction. Once you get the slide in the halfway position, it's a good time to check and verify that all the cables are in good shape. And I actually went through and checked them and all the cables are actually in good shape except for this one, which is fraying. So I've seen a lot of people <laughs> working over the molding they try to reach over this but when you think about it there's only three screws holding that in so i'm going to take this piece out and that's going to allow me to work much easier on this slide system so i need to be able to work back in there well actually i realized the issue about wanting this halfway open and halfway out is that if you didn't take the molding off you couldn't get to the part the fact that i took the molding off I had to basically 
pull it all the way back out again. Otherwise, I couldn't get my step stool in to work on it. So this is what we're going to be working on. And they're, they're labeled. This one on the bottom is the one we're dealing with. That's the top and that's the bottom for bringing it in. And that's the cable that is in question. So we're going to go ahead and clip the cable on the outside and feed the new cable in. To start with, I need to take some pressure off the cable. So I'm going to actually loosen it from this end. So I took the spacer piece off and I've got my ratchet and I'm going to go ahead and ratchet it out. So I loosened the cable quite a bit. So now when I cut it, it's not going to go snapping. Remember, I am using the wrong cutters to do this job. It did make the job a little harder. So let's jump ahead after I got a cleaner cut. Now I was able to get the sleeve over the new cable and I used the spray adhesive to make it sticky so it would then hold a little tighter. I then also put spray adhesive on the old cable and I was able to feed the sleeve over the old cable and then finally pull it through into the RV. Well, that was fun. A <laughs> uh, lot of tugging and pulling. It's not an easy task, just the same, but we got the new cable in. It fed through the pulleys just fine. I reconnected it outside and there's a little rubber grommet that they say to put in there. Let's go ahead and do that right now. This little rubber grommet, this little rubber grommet, they say to kind of slip in here to kind of hold that in place. But to be honest, it was holding pretty good by itself without it. This is the factory installed what we pulled out, but we're gonna be putting this in and then looping the cable around that and crimping it down. So let me go ahead and get this started. I got to get the tensions even on both sides and I'm going to actually give myself some leeway because if I crimp it and it's too loose, I have nowhere to go. So I'm going to go ahead and have this out a little bit. So when I crimp it, that's what's going to get pulled in. And what I need to do is mark my cable of where the best spot's going to be for it. So I went ahead and marked the cable. I pulled it tight and marked it and went ahead and fed the crimp piece through. And now I just need to pull this closer to the eyelet and go ahead and crimp it down and lock it into place. But I marked it back here. I don't want this too far back. Otherwise, when the slide is out, it could possibly interfere with the pulleys. So I gotta make sure that's pulled up nice and tight. So a big thing is to make sure the tension feels the same. I went to the other side and felt the tension and this feels about as tight as it did on the other side now. So before I cut this cable off, we are going to do a test. Sounds smooth. Oh yeah, sounds a lot better. Last couple of steps, cut the cable, and I'll use some electrical tape to tie it off. I'll show you that in just a second. And then after that, put the molding back up and we are done. So we are finally taped off. Everything tested good. So everything back together. I just got a bunch of stuff to put away, but that's it. That's all there is to it. Putting a slide cable on your RV. So. Uh, make sure that you hit that subscription button. Uh, if you like the video, thumbs up for good measure. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Let you know when we post every Sunday at two o'clock. And until next time, safe travels and hope your slides are working great. Yeah.